I feel like that's gonna fill in my whole damn forehead. That's not gonna fill in a brow. It's my, maybe it's gonna fill in a unibrow. Like, boom, boom. Hey beautiful people, welcome back. I hope that you guys are all having such an amazing day today and that you are ready to dive in to today's video because for today we are, as you saw in the title, diving into a full face or basically a full face of new drugstore makeup. And this is makeup I've been picking up and, and you know, kind of putting together for videos, I wanna say for about the last maybe month, month and a half. So there will be a little bit that's a little bit older and then a lot that's newer. So I'm very excited. I don't wanna waste any time because these videos always end up like dragging on because I talk too much. Go figure. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead zoom you guys in and we're gonna get started. Uh, oh, I, hello? Okay, too close. <laughs> just a little bit. Okay, so now that we're good and zoomed in, let's go ahead and start talking complexion. I have already primed with a little bit of my Tatcha Silk Canvas just up and around in my T-zone area and kind of worked it out onto the like cheek regions right here where I have a lot of texture. And I did that because on a day where I'm testing out a new foundation, which today I am, I do prefer to stick with a product that I've used before just so I can keep variables the same in at least a couple of areas. So I have that applied to the whole face, but I did pick up this new product from Revlon that I thought it would be cool maybe we could apply it to half of our face um it's this guy right here this is the revlon skin lights face glow illuminator i have it in the shade 300 sunrise luster now on the back of it it does say that you can um use it alone dab it onto cheekbones use it with foundation like mix it in you can do any of those things i'm going to be applying just a little bit um to like the cheekbone a little bit on the forehead more so the high points of one side of my face so i'm just going to take some and like swipe it on i'm going to use this half of the face and it's not pilling up or getting weird it actually has like a really nice dry down texture to it I think you can very lightly see a little glint of it on camera um again at this point you can't really see too much but it looks really nice I like that it doesn't pill up or have like any weird glittery pieces in it it has just a really nice sheen oh that's pretty so now moving into foundation I have what I am so excited about and that is the Milani screen queen foundation and normally when foundations launch I pick them up I review them like I, I move right through the process very very quickly and for whatever reason with this one I didn't and I actually had quite a few requests for me to check it out and review it and I just realized I think for the first time in history I might have gotten something oddly close to my skin tone maybe even too light <laughs> what all right, so let's shake her up here. I have this in the shade 140, and it says that it has a luminous natural skin finish. It's buildable light to medium coverage, and it is a long wear foundation. And again, the shade 140 Nude Ivory. Whew. Now, here's my only thing, because it does say light to medium coverage, and I want to be fair, because I have some other full coverage products coming up later. Um, maybe what I should do is do, like, a little spot concealing first, just to make sure, like, because obviously I'm still going to have redness, but I'd like to do a little concealing over, like, the harsh redness. That way we can really actually see the foundation and see the good things about it versus just seeing, like, redness coming through. I'm going to take a little bit of my YSL All Hours Concealer. This is in the shade 0.5. And this is what I've been using lately anytime I need to spot conceal. And I just take a little bit of it like that. I kind of did, you know, a dab around. And I think at first when you apply it, you're like, wow, Paige, that's a lot of concealer. But the way that I like to apply it, and I think the reason that it works so well, is because I apply it like this, but then I go in with a fluffier brush. This is the Custom Complexion from Real Techniques, their 221 brush. And it has like this feature right here where you can kind of slide the brush up and down to um, create different coverages. But I like to leave it on the fluffiest setting. And what it does is gives me a nice, like I would say, start on me medium coverage, but it doesn't look thick, cakey, overwhelming. It doesn't look like I totally canceled my acne, but it just gives me that little leg up. Okay, so I zoomed you guys in again, just so you can see. That did take care of some of the more dense redness, but it didn't take away all of my redness and hyperpigmentation. So we're still gonna test the coverage, but knowing going into it that it is more of a light to medium really makes a difference. So I just went ahead and pumped some of it straight out onto my e.l.f. sponge. And we can just start popping it on. Wow, that's actually huh, very close to my neck color. Okay, so I definitely agree with them when they say light to medium because it's covering a little bit of my lighter, like hyperpigmented areas, but it's definitely not covering huh, anything beyond that. You can still see all the shadows and whatnot coming through from my acne scarring and such. I do think that, uh, you know, moving away from the coverage side, I actually think it looks pretty nice. I like that it's not like a super 
thick and cakey foundation. It, it looks like it's settling in okay. For concealer, I have two different options. One of them is a stick concealer. This is from Catrice, and this is their Slimatic Camouflage Stick. I have it in the shade 002 Nature. And then I have from Makeup Revolution, this is their Conceal and Define Infinite Longwear Concealer. It says that it is also crease-proof with infinite coverage. Oh boy, oh, oh boy. We love a big claim on this channel. Yes, we do. So the one from Catrice is absolutely absolutely teeny tiny. Oh my gosh, this is so small. Um, so let's go. Oh, wow, so creamy. Oh my gosh, I applied that. It's literally like a stick of butter. It is so creamy. Holy cow. So let's go ahead. Let's try this one out first and we'll pop it under one eye, like kind of right up in here. And I'm not going to apply a ton just because I want to feel the consistency. And I'm just going to start by patting it out with my ring finger first. I like the coverage. I like that it has a nice, almost muted feeling to it, like a blurring effect, kind of. I like that. It does feel like it's um, a little bit on the dewier, more satin side, which on my under eyes can make it very difficult to set, but it looks really nice. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there for just a second. Cap that, and now we're gonna go in on the other side with a little bit of the Makeup Revolution Concealer. I'm just gonna dot that on, and I'll blend that one out with a sponge. Ooh, guys, I like that Makeup Revolution one. Oh wow. Oh wow. Like I re I really kind of like that. So I'm just building up really quickly here a little bit on the Makeup Revolution side. I just kind of want to see if it builds coverage. Oh, and it does. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, she's not playing around. And then on the other side, I'm going to go in and I will be fair. I'm going to add a little bit of the Catrice. Oh, this time with the Catrice, I wanted to blend it in with a sponge just to see if that changed the consistency at all. I definitely think I'm getting a little more coverage off of the Makeup Revolution side. And I think if I'm looking at the two, I prefer that side because I feel like the coverage on that side stays a little bit better than the Catrice side. But for right now, I'm going to leave the under eyes alone and kind of see what they do. And I'm going to go in like I normally would, and I'm going to use the uh, Makeup Revolution Concealer, and I'm just going to apply a little bit of this on the rest of my face. And I think I'm also going to run a freckle of it kind of on my cheek regions just to get a little bit more coverage. So I took a couple of seconds and just blended that out onto my face. And I think for me, the what I'm liking is the, the concealer so far, not the Catrice one, the Makeup Revolution. It looks nice on my skin. It looks pretty good on my under eye. The Catrice one isn't bad, but it's just that like it, it's almost so creamy or too emollient and my under eyes are so creasy. They are so in Hospitable. They just don't want to like hold on to anything that's super slippery. So if I had to guess, I don't think I would be able to use the Catrice one, especially in that area. The consistency is nice. It's just not something that my face can really grip with. Um, but the, the Makeup Revolution one is working nicely. So now from here, I do have a new setting powder. This is also from Catrice and this is their HD Baking and Setting Loose Powder. It says that it has a mattifying water resistant second skin effect. And I have it in the shade C02 Warm Ivory. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pat out the under eyes and kind of pack this on there and lightly apply it to the whole face. Okay, the packaging I like. It has a nice little lid on it. You lift the lid off and it actually has the netting in here. So it gives you one of these type situations. It's really nice. Again, packaging I don't have an issue with, minus the fact that there was no seal on this. All it was was this little guy like sitting in top of it, but there was no safety seal. But moving past that, it's so finely milled and it feels like like silica type powder. Is that what this is? Is it silica powder? First ingredient is aluminum starch. The second ingredient is silica. Okay, that's why it, that's why it feels so much like silica. All right, um, this, because of the refinement, I didn't expect this to be this type of consistency. I kind of thought it was gonna be more of like a regular, just, you know, run of the mill uh, setting powder. Um, but it is not. So given all of that, I do need to rethink how I'm going to do this because otherwise the foundation review and everything is going to get scrapped. Um, just because, wow, that sh that looks like such an intense shadow on camera for some reason. Um, but I have to change things up. So I'm going to start off, I know it's not drugstore, but this is something I've been using fairly recently, um, or fairly frequently recently. This is from Too Faced and this is their Born This Way, um, foundation powder. I've been using it as a setting powder. It's in the shade Cloud and I want to take and see if I can set my foundation. The foundation itself actually dries down pretty nice. So if you're not someone that needs to set your foundation, you might not need to set this. But I just wanna see how it works with like 
a pressed powder, like a regular pressed, you know, tight powder that I would normally use. And on the other side, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my Maybelline Fit Me. This is an 05 Fair, and it's just the loose setting powder that I use pretty much every day or all the time. All right, so now that I've went through, I've used, uh, you know, other products trying to kind of feel out what's going on, and I think we have multiple situations at play. Um, I think, first of all, this powder is a, like the packaging and the presentation I think is really nice, so there's no issues there. The, um, the issue for me isn't so much in the silica or in like the the ingredients I was just more so mentioning that because I can feel like that's the level of refinement it is that's how fine the powder is and I think that it would work good if I needed to like buff something out or maybe like it says to bake later on something like that but for my skin it's not quite um it's not quite intense enough to set and when I combine that with the sheerness that I have from this foundation I think the two of them together are just causing like pigments to kind of move around and get a little bit funky so I, I don't think at this point it's necessarily bad products so much so as it is um a mixture of like a couple products that just are not loving each other but at this point I like where we're at from there I'm just gonna go in super quickly this is the physician's formula um bronzer palette they sent me this several months ago I've talked about it a ton since then I've used it a ton and I'm just gonna go in with that same big fluffy brush here from Scott Barnes and go into the light bronzer mix it a little bit with the sunset bronzer all right so moving on from bronzer I am freaking excited I have two different blushes this one is from essence and it's called the blush it's in the shade what is this 10 the shade is number 10 befitting and it says it's a silky smooth powder blush to awaken your complexion buildable texture that lasts all day and this color is so good and then this one just kills me this is from flower beauty it's their pyramids blush Oh my, oh my word, I am so freaking pumped. Multi-dimensional color, soft shimmering finish, a mosaic pigmented perfection. A mosaic, oh, of, a mosaic of pigmented perfection. There we go, guys, words matter, put them together. Okay, so let's go ahead and swatch this Essence blush. Oh, that feel. Oh, that feels nice. It has a really beautiful, like, light satin kind of radiance to it. I don't know if it picks up on camera. Oh, that's that's stunning okay and then for the flower beauty one how do i want to swatch this okay i'm gonna take and kind of just like swirl my hands through the whole thing which does kind of you know mess with the palette but i'm gonna swatch it that way we can see i picked these two colors because i thought they would work together <gasps> Ooh, that's pretty okay yeah i think like i think we can kind of work with this here i do want to oh this is oh crap so the flower beauty one all i did was like touch into these little lighter pyramids and in doing so ooh, wow just real quick the swatch though beautiful um but this is incredibly incredibly soft like just touching the peaks did cause it to crumble because it has like a raised kind of pyramid design and it literally just like started falling everywhere crumbling under just the lightest press from my finger so definitely keep that in mind be very gentle i think i'm gonna go in first here this is my refer 04 brush i talked about this in my january favorites which if you missed it i will link it up above oh my word okay Ooh, ooh, i like this blush Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Mm-hmm. Yep, I love this. Okay. Like, that color is so perfect, and it's super buildable. Guys, Essence blushes, like, I've loved them before, but this is beautiful. Like, there's a level of, like, radiance to this that I feel like is not coming across on camera. It's super pretty. I'm... Like, I'm, wow, I love that. Now, going in with the Flower Beauty one, because obviously it's very intense, the entire thing is pure shimmer, I'm gonna grab, this is the Morphe JS2, and it's just a very, like, flimsy type brush, so I can very lightly kind of tap into here. I wanna tap all over so I get a little bit of all the colors, and then I'm going to very lightly veil it. You can see just, I mean, I did the both sides with uh, the tiniest amount of product and look at how much highlight I'm getting. Like, holy cow. It does have a beautiful finish to it. I actually really like this over top of that blush too. It gives me a nice added like amount of dimension that wasn't there before. It just creates like a little bit more, but you know, you can build that up. You could use it as a highlight um, because the lighter shade in here is definitely, well, is it light enough for me to use as a highlight? I don't know. Let's Let's check it out. I'm taking just a little bit of the lightest shade out of the little pyramid pack and let's try it on this side. Okay, literally barely touched my face. Holy crap. Okay. 
That's a bright ass pink highlight. So how we're gonna fix this, or at least dull down the intense pinkness that is now on my cheek, I'm gonna take that big old fluffy brush that I used for the blush, which I'm just knocking off here, and a little bit of my Hourglass Ambient Powder. And what this will do is just work as a diffuser um, over top of the highlight. So it'll help take down a little bit of the color and a lot of the shine. There we go. It helps diffuse it, make it not look quite so intense. All right, so guys, this is where we're at right now. I actually think, all things considered, all the little bumps that we've ran into, I think it looks really nice. Like, my skin itself is really nice. It's smooth. The blushes look really nice layered together. Everything is just, like, it, it looks good. Okay. Okay, I'm pleasantly surprised. All right, so real quick here, let's just get some of the foundation off my lips and put on a little chapstick. My lips are feeling a little bit crusty busty. And this is just my mood chapstick from American Eagle. I talked about that also in the favorites that I linked earlier. All right, so I moved the camera out. We're just gonna keep adjusting it for lighting. You guys know how it is, Northern Michigan, land of the dark and dismal. So when there's light, we just have to try to, <laughs> we have to just try to roll with it to get it to show up on camera. But let's go ahead and talk about brows because I actually do have two new things here. This one is from CoverGirl. This is their Easy Breezy Brow. And it says it draws and fills and and it has a side of it, to my understanding, it has like a two-in-one where one side is a pencil and the other side is a puff, which is interesting. And I have this in the shade 300 Soft Brown. And then I also have this Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt, and this is their Brow Gel Mascara, which I have in the shade 260 Deep Brown. So let's go ahead. We're going to obviously look at the pencil first. So on the one side, it's just like a standard oval length, um, maybe like a quarter of an inch or so. A little bit a little bit scratchy like it's not very as I just drag it it doesn't give me much color I do have to really press to get anything out of it and then the other side you unscrew and it's an actual little powder puff oh oh this is interesting can you hear that it's on a little bit of a spring and as you push it it deploys a little bit of powder and I'm assuming that's like the fill interest this is interesting okay Let's go ahead. I'm just going to, I think, start drawing into one of my brows because we're not really gonna know even what the hell this thing does until we just start applying it. So let's go ahead and start. It says on the back that the pencil side is for drawing and then the fluffy side is for filling. But I feel like that's a really fluffy, like do you guys see how fat that tip is? I feel like that's gonna fill in my whole damn forehead. That's not gonna fill in a brow. It's my, maybe it's gonna fill in a unibrow, like boof, boof, but. I don't know, man. I mean, let's try it. Let's see what we think here. This was smaller, like the actual applicator was smaller. I think it could potentially work. And then I'm just grabbing a spoolie from another eyebrow brush here and kind of working everything down. All right, so I'm done with the CoverGirl pencil and I'm moving into the Maybelline Brow Gel. And it looks just like a regular little brow guy here. Let's take a look at the, ooh. All right, nice little short bristles on the brush. Let's go ahead and run that through really quickly. Hey, y'all, let's talk about this brow gel that I am kind of loving. Nice definition. It's not like super runny, but it's also not too thick. The size of the brush is really nice. Ooh, okay, this is kind of winning, winning chicken dinning me. What? All right, so moving into eyes, I do have two different options, and I would be lying if I said I wasn't more interested in one than the other, but we're at least gonna look at both options and kind of feel it out. So first things first, we have this little guy from Essence. I picked it up. This is their Hey LA Eyeshadow Palette, and it has shades right here. Let me get rid of this. Excuse me. Goodbye. It has these nine shades in it, nine shades, because you couldn't just you know, scooch the bottom row over and put the 10th shade in, but who am I? Uh, but it has these shades in it. It does have a little mirror and uh, yeah, I, just, I don't know. It, now that I'm looking at it, it looks really lackluster. On the internet, it looked a lot cooler. So these are the five that I swatched. These bottom three right here are obviously all shimmers. The top two are matte shades. And uh, given that that's five, that's over half the palette. So, um, you know, I, mm, I, mm, I like it. I think that the, uh, the shimmer shades, are nice. That hot pink shade is actually kind of impressive. Damn, now that I look at it again, that's not too bad. The shimmer shades aren't bad. I do think um, like the hot pink and the orange are better than the gold. The gold looks a little bit dry, a little bit chunky, 
but the orange and the pink look a little bit nicer. They have a little bit more pigment to them. So we have this as an option. Now, onto the other item I was talking about, the one that I will admit I am very interested and intrigued by, and that would be these little guys from Makeup Revolution. It's their eye chrome matte and metal liquid eyeshadow duos. Um, I'm assuming they would be like a dupe for the um, the Huda Beauty ones, her like long ones with all the colors on them. And I also just realized, oh wow, that's got beautiful color. Okay. Um, I just realized though, as I am like getting these undone, out of all the shades, and I think there's like six different versions of this, I somehow picked the two brown ones the two brown ones. <laughs> like, I, what is wrong with me? Oh my gosh. Anyways, we're still going to swatch them, but I just, sometimes I wonder about myself. We have two different duos. We have Worship and Dream, and I believe this one right here is Worship. Ooh, those are so freaking pretty though. Holy cow. That metallic is, met look, look at that. That's like one swipe, just whoop, and it, mm, whoop, that is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me hear you say whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Can't tell, I'm 30. It says create a statement matte base with the matte end. <laughs> Thank you, okay, we, we're not gonna use the chrome to create a matte base. Um, and then ideal worn alone or as a base for your favorite eyeshadows. For an easy day to night look, flip the tube, swipe on the chrome part, no glue required. And it can be layered over the matte eyeshadow or applied just along the lash line for a chrome liner. Now for the first color, I'm gonna go in with the lighter brown out of the two, which I believe is out of Dream. I am actually going to take, I don't have any like excess concealer. There might be a little bit there from when I applied my concealer, but I'm not going to apply any base. I just, for this area in here, I only pulled the leftover from the outer V. I didn't apply any directly to that area. For the inner portion, I'm going to take the other side of that same uh, tube, and I'm just going to, I guess, lightly kind of tap it on. That has such a pretty shimmer. And then with my finger, I'm just going to lightly kind of blend out the line. I do think that while you're going in and kind of layering and tapping, you do lose a little bit of the shine factor. I think with the uh, shimmer side, maybe the smaller you manipulate it or the less, that's better. Now, I wasn't originally going to bring this up because I uh, addressed it over on Twitter and I just did so a couple of hours ago. So at this point, nothing has really come from it, but I do want to mention to you guys, um, I picked up a couple of things from the L'Oreal and Karl Lagerfeld collection and I have just a lipstick, I have a liner and a mascara. Now, obviously pertaining to the eyes, I have no issue thus far because I haven't tried them. When it came to the lipstick, I was going through earlier today because I have a few lipsticks that I picked up and I did put it on Twitter. Nothing has happened. I just did it a couple of hours ago, which is why I wasn't going to mention it. But I do want to openly say I'm going to actually throw up some pictures on the screen here. I don't know how well they'll translate because they were from my cell phone. But I did, upon opening this lipstick to look at the color, I did notice that um, it had like a fiber sticking out of it and um, like an air bubble in the end of it. Very similar to what we saw when there was the whole situation with Jaclyn Hill and her lipsticks. Um, so you can, you know, look at those, what have you. I have a picture of not only the lipstick with the fiber coming out of it, um, but I also did do like a super up close of the fiber. It was on my hand when I took it. And uh, I just wanted to mention it because I don't feel like I would be a review channel if I didn't. So with that being said, we're just gonna keep moving on with the eyes, the lips as we normally would. Um, but I just, I just wanted to mention it because I feel like I need to because I'm honest. But at the same time, you guys know me and you know that I'm not like a drama filled, like, ooh, let's start the next. Like that's, that's not me. But just so you guys know, I'm not in this like trying to start some big thing or whatever. I'm just here trying to talk about makeup, trying to be honest. So that was my experience. Not to say you'll experience the same thing. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and keep going into eyes. I have their little eyeliner and it's one of these where you like kind of dip in type styles. Okay, so no, we're never going to look at that again. Guys, that was painful to get through. First of all, the smell is very intense, very chemical. Not to say other things haven't smelled strong before, but that smells uh, mm, a little bit too potent for me, number one. Number two, and the biggest glaring situation, I took seven dips. Seven little dips to get my... Mm, no. Absolutely not. No. There's a thousand other liners out there that I would recommend before that. Now from here I am going to pause on mascara. You guys know I like to spray my face and do all of that before mascara just because I am very prone to transfer. So I'm going to go in with this guy. This is the Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Luminizing Setting Spray with a radiant finish. And what the hell is this? Can you, hold on, let me like zoom in. Do you see that blob on top? It kind of reminds me of bacon fat. <laughs> like when you make it, how it like separates. 
Okay, locks in makeup instantly. Um, a lightweight formula locks in your makeup with a soft mist of illuminating pearls for a naturally glowing radiant finish. The two part formula, all oh, which is why, why it was separated, um, is specially designed to activate when shaken. The top layer is infused with primrose oil and vitamin E to lock in moisture, while the bottom layer of lilac extract and hyaluronic acid work together to refresh and soothe the skin. Well, now I feel a little bit bad for calling you bacon fat, okay? I'm so sorry. The mist is very nice. You hear that? So that actually does look very nice on my skin. I like the little the little bit of radiance. I like the mister, it's very fine. My only caveat, and this is just like a personal preference thing, anytime I go in to set my makeup and like really set it down for the first time, I like to have something that's a little bit wetter. Um, that's why I always use the Morphe Continuous because while you do get that spray, like you can, you can hear it's really nice and refined. It's a lot more dense, it's a lot wetter. This one, when I spray it, I can actually feel it like setting my makeup down and like pressing all the powder layers together. Whereas the other one feels really nice and it's very light mist. It doesn't have the wetness that I need to press it. So that one I'll use again after a highlight just to lightly press everything down one last time. So I guess we're just gonna go in here with our color pop horse and carriage, oh darn. Oh yeah, my face 100% is darker right there. We're gonna take some of that Catrice powder and see if maybe we can brighten up that area. Why not try it? But because we have that powder on, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do lips before mascara just in case I need to spray again um, after I take the powder off if it leaves like a powdery residue or anything. Picked up some of the new ones from Essence. This is their Stay 8 Hour Lip Liner. Okay, so these are the three lip liners that I picked up from Essence. This is the shade number one because duh, and then we have number two and number four. So it gets progressively more pink as we go. And I'm obviously gonna stick with shade number one, but I wanted you guys to see them um, just you know, if you were wondering about the colors, those are the three shades. I will say the first one, because duh, that one is more of a like warm tone brown. All right, and there is that all over the lips. And then for the actual lip color, I do have another thing that I picked up from Essence as well. This is their Shine, Shine, Shine Wet Look Lip Gloss. It's just in the shade 18 Plump Me Up. It looks just like a clear lip gloss, but it was new, I think on the Ulta website, or at least it said it was. And it's just, is there glitter? Yeah, there's like a bunch of micro glitter in there. Look at how intense that, oh my gosh, that looks so, so stunning. Okay. All right, so there's the gloss. Dang, I actually quite like that. It's really pretty, beautiful, like shiny, shiny look. It's not like a weird plumping, like burning feeling on the lips. I don't feel anything. It doesn't even hardly have a smell. Right, so moment of truth, let's go ahead and dust off this baking situation here. All right, so I don't know. I don't think that that did much of anything, if I'm being honest. At first I thought like, okay, maybe it's because of when I applied it, like it's now in my makeup routine versus um, earlier. But then I thought to myself, I've used other powders like my Fenty, I've used Maybelline, I've used a ton of other loose and pressed powders to lighten up my skin after it oxidizes. And I've never had it like do literally nothing, which is what this did. So now we are down to just mascara and I actually have two different things that I want to to try. This is the Milani the Violet one. It's actually their lash primer. And this is the, again, L'Oreal collab for mascara. So I think what I'm going to do, because I just thought about it like rationally in my head, and if I'm going to test a new mascara, I probably shouldn't test a primer. And I really want to try the primer. So I'm going to curl my lashes and maybe I'll try the, um, the lash primer first just by itself with a mascara that I'm already used to. So I have one coat of that applied to this side and now I'm gonna go over it with my L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. So I know that you guys probably can't see this on camera, um, but like I'm super impressed with how that looks. Definitely doing it on the other side too. It actually just like applies and separates my lashes, but also lengthens them. It gives them a little bit more bulk, but it bulks them up on like an individual lash level, not like a all of them bulk together and make one mega lash. And I think that's what's given it, like that's what's making it so special. All right, you guys, so with the mascara on and completed, this is the final face. What do you think? Be sure to leave me all of your thoughts and opinions down below. Um, if there's anything that stood out to you that you either wanted to try or you were curious about, something that you did try, maybe you liked it more, whatever the case is, leave me all 
of your thoughts and opinions down below or if you just like the way the look turned out you can leave that down there as well you guys know the drill at this point y'all just leave me whatever you want to leave me down in the comments um while you're down there don't forget you can check me out on instagram and on twitter they will both be linked down in the description box most importantly if you haven't done so yet please don't forget to subscribe turn on your post notifications because i do upload three new videos a week monday wednesday friday and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m my time here in good old northern michigan so subscribe turn on your post notifications and you guys that is it thank you all so so much for watching please do not forget to have a great day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and i'll see you in the next one bye hi problem solver all right yes <laughs> i just gave myself a high five <laughs> time to reevaluate your life choices. Hey beautiful people, welcome back. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing day and that you are ready to dive into today's video. I don't know, that just felt like the right thing to do. <laughs> hey beautiful people, welcome back. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing day today. <laughs> I can't because I felt myself go like this. Hey beautiful people, I did it again. <laughs>